So my smart ass 14 year old son challenged me to a game of Tekken the other day in front of his mates. I finished him off with a killer combo in under 30 seconds before proudly exclaiming, Who's your daddy, bitch? He replied back with, Mom said it's probably the milkman. <laughs> Little bastard. <laughs> Roll the intro! <laughs> Hey guys, what is up? Welcome to the podcast episode. <laughs> what episode are we on now? What episode oh, are we on? 14? We're on episode 14. 14, episode 14. Zach's second week. He's already doing better than I. I'm on episode two. <laughs> Zach's on, on episode up. two. Zach's on the come up. He's a transfer student. Um, He has a no compete clause until next episode. But um, Started from 13, now we're here. <laughs> started from 13, now we're here. Welcome back to Hell of Honor podcast. Oh, Jesus Christ. Welcome back to Hell of Honor podcast, guys. <laughs> episode 14. We are going to be talking about um, all kinds of stuff, but the main topic for today is what game we played that got us into gaming more seriously. So what made it more of like a hobby or a pastime for us than just like the road trip experience? Like, oh, what got shit. You... More seriously? I might have to change mine. Never mind. <laughs> <gasps> you know what I mean. Just like what got you into doing it more often? Because <laughs> I think everybody has that phase when you're a little kid where you're like, you know, you want to be outside, but you want to play video games. And then there's this point when you just decide, you know what? I don't need to be tan. I need to be pale and fear the sun. And that's what happens when you become a gamer. So that that's what's going to happen. Actually. Also, Mac later on is going to be talking about the Pokemon League, I'm pretty sure. At least that's what he told me 20 seconds ago before we started. Um, so we'll get to that later. But first, I might throw a curveball. I'm going to throw goodness. the new kid under the bus because that's what happens in a bullying situation. Zach, you should lead off. Okay. Uh, so... What got me in it? So the first video game that I remember playing, period, really was uh, it was Pokemon Blue. My God! Uh, my my best friend growing up lived like down the street from me and had it on Game Boy, uh, and so we would share that playing back and forth. And that actually is like it came out in '98 in the states, I think. So I was five ish, and so I actually like used that to learn how to read really well and like kind of a formative thing for me. And I've stuck with that for you know a decade i'm 25 now and doing the pokemon league with you guys every week but that was kind of just like the first little introduction to it i think what really for me got me back into it more seriously was a a lot later uh because i just i didn't have any consoles growing up really regularly like i would get a ps2 or an xbox a few years after they had come out and it was kind of already dead and on in the next gen uh but when i found out that i could get skyrim uh, on my laptop that I was using for college at the time, and it was only like 20 bucks at the time. It was right before they announced Special Edition, which was why it was uh, on sale. But I was like, holy shit, I can... Am I allowed to cuss on here? Yeah. Okay, no, there. fuck it, no. Don't fucking cuss, you little <laughs> shithead. I was like, holy shit, yeah, I can, Zach, I can watch your language. on my Jesus laptop. Jesus fucking Christ. Jesus fucking Christ, dude. <laughs> Uh, but no, I like I I got Skyrim on my laptop, and that's uh you know blew me away because I could take that I had it with me everywhere. I was taking my laptop to friends' houses. I was taking I could play it at a coffee shop. I could play it on campus. I could play it at home. You know whatever uh, I wanted to do. It wasn't like a console that I had you know stuck at my house, and it was only when I was at my house. Uh, and that is kind of what got me like oh I can play games on my computer. And so I started looking at you know PCs that were built with more you know specified hardware for newer games and more powerful you know gpu cpus and it was really like a just jumping off the cliff's edge it was a very fast descent into madness going from playing you know a game that came out in 2011 on my little laptop that cost 200 bucks to spending every fucking dime that i get on this pc <laughs> but uh yeah i mean that was it was the start it was a game that like everybody had played at that point because this was in 2014 you know i'd like dabbled in it but three years after that game came out it still was making a really big impact on me for the first time Tova game. i think i've logged about 500 hours at this Dude, point through different get playthroughs my, get on my level <laughs> It's also like how I found out about modding too, like how people were going in and creating their own little, like tiny additions or little bug fixes created by players all the way to people creating these really extensive missions and storylines and characters all the way to like some people doing that in their free time and using it as an audition almost for Bethesda and getting jobs by going in and using their own free time to mod this game and make it their own. To be honest here. The only good mod that happened in Skyrim was the Macho Man Randy Savage Dragons. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. 
Did you uh, did you ever put did you ever put Inigo in your game? Uh, he was the the companion, right? Not the companion, yeah. the follower. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've I've done Inigo. I always called him Inigo because I was always a really big Princess Bride fan. Um, and I got to kind of combine those two little head cannons. Like, what what if Princess Bride <laughs> and Skyrim were taking like that's in part of Tamriel and we just don't know it yet? Elder Scrolls Six. You're playing as the Dread Pirate Roberts. Confirmed. You heard it here first. The, uh, the Dread yeah, Pirates no, Robert? The Dread Pirate Roberts. Jesus fuck, yeah. Matthew, death post. I, I was texting at the same time, I apologize. Hey, it's alright. You did a great job today, Mac. I'll most likely kill you in the morning. Somebody will get that joke. Not Mac. Woo! Somebody Woo! will get that joke. Woo! But yeah, I mean, it was really cool. Like, I, you know, three years after this game came out, it still kind of got to me seriously for the first time, and really got me into gaming the way that I am now, which is what led to me, you know, making friends over gaming the way, like, the way that I'm, you know, connected with you guys in this group on Discord, all the way to people in all different corners of the world that are kind of brought together by the same experience, which is really cool to me. Also brought you into uh, streaming, too. Yeah, uh, especially when I was still uh, on my laptop and, like, looking at how to get more involved in PC gaming. Streaming was a really big part of that because I could go and, you know, see different ways of going about games that I was already playing all the way to, you know, checking out games that I might be thinking about or just kind of learning more about the culture as a whole because that's also been a really fascinating thing. Uh, I've actually started streaming. Uh, I've done it on and off for a year or so, but I've been working on getting into a more regular, consistent schedule with that. So it's actually a the same as my name on here. If anybody ever wants to check that out, it's uh, Zachary well, Plays Stuff. Yeah, twitch.tv slash Zachary Plays Stuff. Yeah. I'll link to it in the description, guys. Don't worry about it. I'll put the link in the description. Um, so it's, uh, I mean, it's it's just, it's been a really cool experience getting to figure out that there are all these people all over the place with this incredibly wide versatility of interest that all somehow come together in the same really extensive community. And I've gotten a really cool reception jumping into Twitch and just streaming in general, met a lot of friends and learned a lot about gaming through that. I guess I'll go now. Um, I feel bad because I don't think mine's going to be as heartfelt and sincere as that. Uh, also like, the titty mods. It's, the titty mods are <laughs> great. Zach just saved me. Um, no, but it's like, you ever like present in class and the kid in front of you gives like this heartfelt, like tear jerking speech and you're like, I'm about to go talk about sports. I'm so fucked it's not even funny. Like, <laughs> like, I'm about to look like such a dick. Like, we've all been there. Like, We've all been there. But, um, yeah, so the game that I would say, I've been gaming, I've been gaming, I'm going to put that in quotes, since like the early 2000s. We got a PS1 from my cousin when he was getting ready to enlist in the uh, Marine Corps. They sent us a box of his stuff because he wasn't going to need it anymore. And the PS1 had like NASCAR 2003. Yeet. And that was like my first introduction to racing. It would probably explain a lot of why I like driving so much and why I'm a decent driver in video games. But, um, yeah, I played on and off. We I had a Game Boy Advance SP. I had a Game Boy Advance for a while, but then I had a Game Boy Advance SP. And then I played Yoshi's Island. In Yoshi's Island, I was like, I probably beat that five or six times throughout. And then I was trying to like... There was, like, you could, like, look up challenges online. Like, there were challenges, like, you couldn't get any health. You couldn't eat anything. So you couldn't have eggs and stuff like that. You had to beat it without eggs. Which is hilarious if you think about it, because that means you have to, like, triple jump up to some bubbles to pop them with your tongue. So that's kind of fun. Um, but then I would say the game that probably got me in the most into gaming as a communal kind of sense, if we're going to go, like, if I want to rebound off of what Zach said, um, would probably have been Halo Reach, which I got when I got my Xbox 360 that would have been fall of freshman year, so 2010, I think. Fuck, I forgot about Reach. Fall of 2010. And at the time, Achievement Hunter started doing a show. Achievement Hunter was a startup at the time. It was only two years in. It was a division of first two, so it wasn't really a startup, but it was a startup for them in that division. And two years in, they started a show called Fails of the Week, which actually, Mac, I left this shot at the very beginning of it, but Mac actually is in an episode of Fails of the Week. Um, He's, like, he was a part of it in a way. And we didn't realize it till like, they did the compilation at the end of all the Fails of the Weeks. That was when we realized. It's so, like, two years after we realized we were in an ep- he was in an episode of Fails of the Week. You can actually see I my s- foot leaving the shot as the scene I opens. I s- still remember that goddamn fucking game. That was a funny one. That was on... Oh, God. 
We were playing Infection on Sword Base. Sword Base, that's what it was, yeah. It was that fucking... That oh. one game pissed me off so bad. <laughs> yeah, because I went up the lift and got killed instantly, because I didn't think they were upstairs. Like, y'all wanted, y'all were going to hold the Alamo, and I was like, I'm going upstairs, and I took the grab lift, <laughs> and the second I came off the lift, they knifed me. Dude, I was a zombie instantly. But, they um, had the uh, high ground. They had the high ground, Anakin. But um, that from then on, watching Achievement Hunter, and then... Three years later, I went to my first RTX and my only RTX. I want to go back, but I haven't been back yet. Um, I went to RTX in 2014. Um, That was awesome. And that was when I started looking at YouTube and streaming and stuff like that. Because 2014 was the the summer after my senior year of high school. I was going into college. And at the time, I was going to be a mechanical engineer. Um, As at least you two can attest, that didn't work out. Um, I ended up graduating a degree in film and video production, having done YouTube throughout, on and off throughout college. I'd made some gaming videos and some Let's Plays. They're still up there. I want to kind of get back to it. Um, now I'm kind of doing it through this, though. Mac is doing this, and then I want to kind of do some Let's Plays with us. You know what I mean? Like, later on, maybe. Yeah. Then uh, streaming came along, because streaming was easier to me, because I think a lot of people watch YouTube videos and they take it for granted. I think it should be noted that when you watch 20 minutes of footage, there was probably an hour and a half of editing that went into those 20 minutes. At least. And if you're a good editor, it gets faster and faster, especially like with the podcast. When I first started editing the podcast, it was taking me like an hour to an hour and 40 minutes, I would say, to edit each episode of the podcast because I was trying to get the timing really right. Once you've – the thing with episodes, it's kind of nice. If it's something like this, it's very – I'm not going to say repetitive, but it's very consistent in length is you know when to cut. You can look at – I can look at the sound wave and see what I want to take out and what I want to don't want to take out in Premiere. And then I can drop in the graphics. I can drop in the music, and then I can export it and send it. Um, sometimes I forget to put transitions in. That's happened twice now. But it actually doesn't, I, in my opinion, it doesn't detract a lot. But if I want to get consistent, I need to start making sure I do a checklist. Um, but So Twitch was easier because I could just, re- it was literally like recording it live and then I could upload it if I wanted to. Um, and what's funny is actually Kat today from our, she's actually the one who suggested this topic for the podcast. I'll give her a shout out here. She's a Twitch streamer. I think she just got her affiliate. I think she's a Twitch affiliate now. I think. Um she was talking in her Discord server for her followers about how she had been watching Captain Sparkles. He went offline and she found me. And that's actually how I met Kat. Is she started following me on Twitch and watching me. And she only watched me because her husband, Giggles, who we've now met in real life. Well, me and Mac have. Zach hasn't yet. Um, was in a game of Rocket League with me. And I said, hey, I'm live on Twitch. Say hey, everybody in the chat. And Giggles went and told his wife, his fiance at the time, now his wife, that... uh. The guy in this thing was streaming, and she actually watched it to watch Giggles in the game, and then she just stayed for the rest of the night. And the rest no is kidding. kind of history at this point. That's how we actually met. So um, that was kind of cool. But yeah, I think it's interesting to see how much gaming is a community and how much we stand together. Um, we can be stupid sometimes, and I think there's people in the community that are that are really... Sometimes. <laughs> I think in, as a whole, gaming, especially gaming media, is a chance to express voices and to give people a new chance to be the head of a media and to be the head of something that in a lot of other mediums, they're not given that chance. I think we've seen, you see it, it's a double-edged sword. Especially for women, it's a double-edged sword. Um, you see things like, oh, a girl will stream, and somebody will be like, oh, you know, well, she's just doing it because she looks good, or she's just doing it because of that. And it's like, but that's so stupid to say. Like, this is an industry where she can literally set her own destiny and be her own person, and not be cast for what she looks like. And people are trying to force that down their throats. So I think it's a double-edged sword being in something like this. But I think it's good in the long run. Because you weed out those people who just don't deserve to be there. Or who don't... The audience members who shouldn't be there. You know what I mean? Like with Twitch... Well, there, is, there is definitely a lot of... Yeah, like I, I streamed to an audience of 8 on average. 8 to 12 people on average. My highest view count was 24 at one point. But... And it was only for like half an hour. Um, But the biggest thing is... Is I banned 9 people. And people are like, oh, when you're a small streamer, you shouldn't ban anyone. You absolutely should. Just because they're in a small stream and they're the only viewer does not mean they should get a free pass. You should enforce the rules on everyone. Like, that. He came in and he said something. And I knew, you know, like when somebody says something and you're like, this is only going to go one way. Like they're, they're, this... they're, not, they're not acting out yet, but you know that they're yeah. setting up for he it. He said something and I dropped him. And then like two other people rolled into chat instantly and were like, Oh, we see you're banning people. And I literally out loud said, do you want to try for three? And they both said something and they both got banned. So I banned three people that night. And it's just, it's just how you have to be. You have to, you have to stand your ground. You need to believe that you have a right to be there because you do. And once you stand your ground, you'll be fine. 
gaming well, is a place a... for everybody. So don't go around and be a dick to everybody else. And if you're there, stand your ground. You deserve to be there. So right. Like I have a follower, uh, Tuzzy, who is very consistent. Uh, and he's over in the UK, so the time zone is very different for me here in Tennessee, but he still makes an effort to be there and be a part of the community in my chat whenever he can. And I was having an issue with that the same way, where once I banned one, uh, multiple others just all started flocking in really quickly. And he was, you know, trying to be helpful and stay at beat. And he was like, hey, you know, at least, you know, at least it's helping your uh, your viewer average. Because, again, I'm a small, I'm still sticking around between three and five average viewers. He's like, hey, it's helping your average. And there is, there's almost, like, for a half a second, that voice in the back of my head. We're like, oh, you know, it, it is helping my, like, you know, the more people are more likely to come and see a channel that already has a bunch of people in it. But like you're saying, like, you've got to stand for what you're standing for. And if you're wanting to stream, if you're wanting to put your voice out there in this community, then you have to, you know, you have that responsibility to use your voice and stick with your beliefs and what you actually want to encourage in the community instead of just allowing whatever is going on around you to keep going on. All right, Mac, Man, I think it's here. your turn. I'm over here helping these small time streamers. I'm over here averaging at least zero a night, you know? <laughs> <laughs> is it was my turn? Shit. I thought we were going to give Gary a chance. Do you mean poopy head? Oh, fuck. He's not here, is he? Damn it. Well, I guess, uh, yeah, my... What the fuck just happened? Did I miss a joke earlier? Yeah, I thought you... I was referring to Gary, like, the rival in the old Pokemon games that you were legally obligated to give a funny nickname to. Uh, I named him... Nine times out of ten, I either named him after a good friend or my brother. I just always named him, like, you idiot or something. Like, butthead, because I was five years old, <laughs> when know, I was like, oh, 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 I called him butthead! <laughs> to talk about streaming in all the Pokemon games when you can name your opponent... Fucking Ray Narvaez Jr. Brown Man names it Chat, so he's always playing against Chat. <laughs> I love it, genius. <laughs> and he's like, That's "Chat, are you beating your Pokemon? What the fuck is wrong with you, Chat?" <laughs> well, uh, yeah, my my I get my go-to to got me that that got me into gaming initially was Pokemon Blue, like Zach. Uh, but what got me into a communal sense was Pokemon Emerald or Pokemon Pearl. I don't remember which one it was. It was one of those that was kind of like back to back. It was like right when I started taking competitive Pokemon a little bit seriously. Look what that blossomed into. You're running a league now. I'm running a goddamn league. <laughs> You're going to lose on Saturday in your own league. Square up, ho. My favorite thing was when we were on, was that Saturday night you asked me that, Zach? Zach was like, Hey, please tell me I have an easy week next week. And Mac was like, yeah, tell me the same. And I brought the schedule map. And I was like, oh, yeah, by the way, you're playing each other. So shout out. Both, both of us were pissed. Y'all can, y'all can uh, look forward to that. You know, I had to rotate sometime. the weekends because somebody asked for a buy sooner than their buy originally was. But the lucky thing about now us only playing each other once is moving a week forward or backward doesn't actually hurt the schedule that much. It just changes when yeah. someone has the buy. So it wasn't. Now they can't do it again. Like if it happens again, we're going to have like a scheduling thing. But. Yeah. Right, go ahead, Max. Sorry to interrupt. All good. But, um, yeah, Pokemon, that was kind of what got me into the communal thing with the whole competitive and shit like that. And uh, Actually, around Pokemon X and Y and Omega Ruby Alpha Sapphire, I became a, a, a Pokemon dealer of sorts where I would actually uh, Beat the shit out of me on the weekends and breed me? Yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> where I would uh, breed actual Pokemon for other trainers and they would like pay me like one two dollars for the fucking egg and that was easiest money in my life because all i had to do was run in a goddamn circle around lumio city fucking that was good times that's when you rubber band your stick in a direction because like in gta now another thing about gaming that was like that mac is pretty much almost that's like almost like a form of achievement hunting is i actually and mac remembers this it started with the 360 but i went through a phase where i was like i hundred percented i think three games in a row yeah. Where it was like I was playing every weekend, and people would be like, "We want to play multi." Like, it'd be like, "You want to play multiplayer?" I was like, "No, I got to do like this achievement or whatever." Like the Halo games, I never hundred percented because they were a bitch. Actually, four, I did all the. No, I didn't do all the base achievements. Never mind. I, I got all the co-op ones. I didn't get all the single player ones. Single player on Legendary was just a nightmare. Um, True. But uh, like I hundred percented Fallout Four, and then I didn't do the DLC. I still need to go back and do that probably, but whatever. Um, never hundred percented it with the DLC, but I hundred percented Fallout Three. 
I didn't do New Vegas. New Vegas took forever. New Vegas had too many. How, how many hours was it to 100% for? Uh, I did four playthroughs. Um, complete playthroughs to 100% the base game. It's probably 130 hours, I think. Now, I didn't do the smart thing, and Mac was telling me about this afterwards, but I actually enjoyed the game enough it didn't bother me, which is what you do is you come up to the decision point, and then you save, and you don't overwrite that save. And then every time you want to go back and get the other faction's achievements, you just go back to your decision point. But the funny thing with 4, unlike 3 and New Vegas especially, and then New Vegas, if you got far enough down one trail, you were down that trail. There was no going back. You were back. boned. Because <laughs> like, there was a crap ton of missions. Like Even if you take the Yes Man quests, I mean... You're seven quests from the end, and I mean long quests from the end, when you're when you're uh, rejected by the NCR. And the NCR is usually the last person to reject you. They're the last yeah. ones to be like, there's no coming back. Caesar's Legion villainizes you immediately. Did you sneeze in Caesar's presence? That's too bad. Um, you're gone. But um, You're dead. Fallout 4 was really... I thought Fallout 4 was really... Fallout 4 was better for achievements because it wasn't as... I don't. It just wasn't as repetitious, if that makes sense. There wasn't as much traveling. It was now. To be fair, for a Fallout game, was it good that it was so linear? No. But for the fact of just wanting to play through it and enjoy the story, it was better that it was linear, in my opinion. Um, yeah. And for the direction they were taking it to build it into a multiplayer game, which based on what Jet, what uh, Todd has said in his press conference, and stuff, <laughs> I just literally said, I literally said Jeff. Shut up, Jeff. Jeff. So Todd, Jeff. Um, my apologies, <laughs> Todd, if you're out there, bro. I feel you, man. Um, Todd in his press conferences has said that. So I think he said it in the uh, documentary that me and Mac watched, which was like uh, that 76 is literally at its base. It was the multiplayer that was meant to come out with Fallout 4, but they just decided to release it as its own game. So like Fallout 4, when it was originally conceived, was going to have a multiplayer, but it took so long to build and it was taking so long to put together that they were like, fuck it, we'll make it its own game. Um, I, now seeing that, I understand why Fallout 4 was the way it was. If I had not knowing that at the time, I think we all agreed, like Mac and I talked, it wasn't a bad game at all. It was actually a really great game. But was it? It wasn't a Fallout game at the essence we had come to know and love. But knowing yeah. now what it's going to, I completely understand it. Now it's like I totally forgive and understand what was going on there, and I respect the decisions. And I always, res I, I'm not one of those super fan boys who's like when a game developer goes in a different direction, I immediately hate. I hate those people who are like, well, they don't know what they're doing. You're right, but you don't design games, and they do. So why don't you just shut up and sit back and wait? Like <laughs> that's like telling the captain when he takes a left turn instead of a right. Hey, man. You're doing it wrong. Really? You're going to take the seat away from the pilot and just tell him to go fuck himself? Hey, boy. Well, also, if, we don't, if, we don't give, if we don't give game studios you know, room to change direction and explore new ideas, we're going to be stuck with the same shit for the rest we'll of our lives. We'll be playing lives. Pokemon in 20 years. Oh, wait. Fuck. Um, but, oh, wait. Fuck. <laughs> but now we're about you know, now we're about to get like a whole game about, around Pokemon, hopefully. So. Can we talk about how Pokemon Go was the most revolutionary Pokemon in 20 years? Brought even like, the world uh, together. Oh my god, I've never seen everyone as if, happy as they were. only now, for a few minutes, it brought the world for, together, yeah. Mac and I, I swear to god. My favorite, oh my gosh. My favorite memory from Pokemon Go is probably Mac and I at Shelby Farms that day on the disc golf course. These three people go down into this ditch because there's, there's a gym in the middle of a hole in Shelby Farms. Like, it's just this dell in the middle I of I know exactly field. where you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, it's like when you go around that bendy road coming from, like, the playground from the lake. It's just, like, down this slope. And they're down there fighting it at point-blank range. Mac and I are on this slope, like, on the high ground watching because we have the high ground now. We had the high ground. And the second they take the gym, there's that momentary pause where you have to choose to put Pokemon in. Mac just tapped it immediately and dropped in his two most powerful po like his most powerful Pokemon, and I did the same. So we actually, they did all the work, and then we took the gym. Now, to be fair, like, four seconds later, they annihilated us, and they took the gym back. But <laughs> for ten seconds, it was funny as shit. For ten seconds, it was a mild inconvenience. Because they genuinely that. turned and looked right at us. It was like, they knew who it was. <laughs> they knew exactly who it was. Shelby Farms was more populated the week, or even the month surrounding Pokemon Go's release than I've ever seen it in the entire time that I was living in Memphis. The True university that. I work at, the university I work at, which we're not going to say, because just for reasons, but uh, the university it's I work It's the University of Phoenix. It's the University of Phoenix. Um, <laughs> the campus is like, the if you like Pokemon Go, the campus is... The they campus have a campus? Stuff. Yeah. Mac can, Mac can attest <laughs> to the fact that that campus is about as good as it gets. You will never be short of gear, and you can battle any gym you want within a block, so... It's pretty awesome. Um, and if you have 20 of your friends, you can actually do legendary raids. But only if you have 20 of your friends, because then you're just fucked. Dude, the friggin' CPs... I think all three of us together have 20 friends. The C... <laughs> yeah, but no, over you can't double up, dude. If, we're, if we have a mutual friend, it doesn't count as two, yeah. you moron. Jesus. We have 20 friends. We're, only if we scared. double down. They need to start reproducing by budding. Um, but... 
Mac, no, did they we, don't. Did no, we interrupt they you don't. or did you finish your uh <laughs> were you finished or did we interrupt you? I uh I pretty much finished. I just wanted to talk, you know, segue into the Pokemon League real quick. Good. So uh <laughs> good. Good. <laughs> I was saying good because we actually stayed near Pokemon. We didn't get off into, like, aerospace again, and then you had to come back and talk about Pokemon after NASA. Hey, dumbasses, come back. Uh... <laughs> Speaking of linear versus nonlinear conversations and stories. <laughs> but, uh, you know, we're gonna we're just going to go over the uh, standings because the everybody except for Healing Deku and Brave Bananas uh, matches were released this week. Uh, we had scheduling conflicts with them. We weren't able to record that match. We said that uh, before. We said that some matches might not get recorded, so we're sure. good on that. But uh, we just want to run through the standings real quick from uh, bottom to top. Um, we... <laughs> sorry to throw you right under the bus, Josh, but uh, at Navy Boy, dead ass last, well, tied for dead ass last. I was about to say because <laughs> it's on. We're on goal differential right now, pretty much. Yeah. Uh, Cataline is uh, also in last. Uh, Dust Boots also in last. Helian Deku is right above Dust Boot with uh, one extra, or one less goal differential or point di- differential. Uh, Curly Fries didn't play last week, so she's, you know, zero all the way table. around. Uh, Brave Banana, he is in currently f- fourth place. I he's, think tied, he's tied for second. He's not, t- he's not tied. I think it would be fourth he's place. Techni- he's technically in third. How, technically many people, how many people are left above him? It's him, Three. then you... Him, you, then Alex, right? Yeah, so it would be four. Four. He, no, he's in third, because you and Alex are tied. Me, Alex, and Zach are all tied. Okay, yeah, so... He's standings tied. that I'm looking at show... Brave I was going to say, I'm looking at the standings right third. now. <laughs> yeah. He's Brave Banana in third. He's technically tied for third. Okay, whatever. Because he got... But fucking... Because he lost one, remember? So, But you guys all 2 owed. So since you all 2 owed, you're all equal. Yeah, Zachary Play stuff in uh, tied for first. Prince of Flames tied for first, and yours truly, the one true Wapa, tied for first. Uh, Zach, you will be going down to probably mid table after Saturday. I have the going blindness. down to lift up the bar higher than you can reach. I can actually move up this week for no other reason than that I have the buy. I'm I'm pretty tall, Zach. I don't know what you're talking about. I can reach pretty high. Also, I really like that optimism. I can move up in the standings because I have the buy. Yeah. Since I'm not, <laughs> yeah, because no, because if you, you think can't about go down, it, if you think about it, I'll have less games played, but my differential won't change. Other people's differential could hurt even more, so I could move up because of that. Because that's what True. decides it more. Games Max matches is play, gonna hurt. That's why oh. Rachel's in the middle of the table because she only has one match played, so her stats are completely null. Don't make me um, bring Miley Cyrus and Miley Cyrus is dad into this shit. Side bro. note: If you had told me when we started this shit that I was gonna have to track battle differential to discern places. <laughs> I wouldn't have done it because that was a bitch of a thing to make in XL, but we did. <laughs> so goddamn it! I guess this is growing up. Well, I guess that's going to uh, end the stream this week. Anybody the podcast? got any parting stream, stream podcast? We talked so much about streaming today. Fuck it, y'all end this shit. I'm done. <laughs> uh, yeah, with the league uh, again for anybody interested, I should hopefully more than likely be streaming that live this Saturday. Uh, at Zachary Plays Stuff on Twitch. You can also find me on Twitter at Zachary Plays Stuff. And I'll be giving everybody a heads up whenever I'm online, especially when we are getting ready to stream week two of the Pokemon League. I'll link that to, is uh, it for me. I'll link to your social and your Twitch in the chat below, in the uh, description below. Um, as always, guys, hope you guys enjoyed the podcast. Hope you guys come back next week and enjoy it even more. Make sure to subscribe. And like this video, make sure you subscribe and click that bell so that you know exactly when the video comes out. I try to do it always on Wednesdays at noon, so it comes out right around lunchtime for you guys to be able to watch it. It's a very short podcast, half an hour, 40 minutes, so where you can get on with your day and everybody can move on. Um, hope you guys enjoyed it, and as always, be you. Have a good week. Bye-bye. Let's go rob a bank.